everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Music Biz Weekly Podcast, brought to you by HypeBot.com. We want to thank Bruce and everybody over at HypeBot for everything they do supporting the show here. Um, so, Jay, we have a special guest joining us this week. Mark McKelvey, founder and CEO of GigRoad, GigRoad.com, and it's also an app, by the way. So, um, let me just read a little bit about what is gig road here for people before we get into it let you explain it gig road is something like airbnb for concerts connecting artists with fans and places to play venues on gig road may be professional but they may also be just about anywhere which enables artists to create gigs in towns that may not have many professional venues fans can literally provide the venues opening up a much broader spectrum of possibilities for artists to share their music so Mark, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me on. Mark, why don't you give us the two-minute spiel behind the history of, of, of what led you to Gig Road? Yeah, um, wow. well, you introduced it really well. Like That's exactly what Gig Road is. And it's, um, the spiel is really that when I, um, well, about eight years ago, I was a musician in L.A., and I didn't know anything about technology. And I had been playing around gigs and stuff in L.A. for about um, maybe about eight years, ten years, you know. And I was in two major, like, two, I spent most of my time in two different bands. Um, the first one I thought was really, we were pretty good. and um, But we couldn't get any good shows. Like, we were in Long Beach, and we really played, like, all the dive bars and all the kind of, like, taco places and, and all those kind of places for a couple years. But it was really frustrating, and we really could never get to the point where we could play anything like the the Viper Room or you know the Derby or anything like that, and um, and so that kind of like got it fizzled out, and we lost a member, and we kind of kept on as a three piece, but it was we kind of fizzled out because of the frustration. And then I got into another band, and I didn't think it was really very good. The band wasn't we didn't we weren't musically very well very good, um, but like our bass player was uh, she wore a bikini you know all on stage and stuff and. Which would have been fine if she was, um, you know, like a real, like if she was Jack Bruce or something. But she was, you know, I mean, it was no, it wasn't really about the musicianship. And I didn't think we were that good, great of a band. But conversely, we got all the big gigs. Like we played the Viper Room. We play like the all these places I mentioned, and a bunch of other places. And I thought, well, this is weird. It's like, you know, because the and actually it was because the lead singer had all these connections. And I thought, well, this is a real problem because you know, obviously, the best music is necessarily getting in front of the best, you know, in front of the, the people. And I thought, well, this whole system really needs to be changed. And I thought technology could do it, but I didn't. I didn't know anything about um, technology. I didn't even have a computer, so I ended up getting a laptop and then and teaching myself programming. And then that was about eight years ago. And then Gig Road is now. You know, I I worked in the industry for a while, and then and then created Gig Road. And so that's where it came from, pretty much. So so, and and this might be an obvious question that you get asked a lot, but how is Gig Road different? than um, house concerts, or is it any different than a house concert? Um, it's not exactly different. Well, it's, it's just not deemed exactly a house concert. It, um, it could be anywhere. Um, like it's, so it's not exactly different in that way. It's, it's different in terms of the process, though, um, in that like when, everyone, when, when anyone joins Gig Road, they don't have to join as a band or a venue or as a fan. Like they can join as, uh, uh, as just a you know, person who can be all three. And so it's different in, in the way that the gigs are set up and, and the way that the, the app actually um, allows people to set up gigs and set up ticket prices and things. But no, essentially, it is a house concert type of thing, except for that it could be also, you know, I mean, if, if you guys ever seen the Woodstock movie, like the guy, um, yep. that Yasger guy, you know, he, if he had gig road, he could have just made Woodstock theoretically using that instead of getting the guy with the afro and the motorcycle and stuff to do it, you know. Right, so, so it's, it's not of, just at somebody's house. It could be at a venue. It could be at a, you know, a school or a abandoned whatever. It could be just anywhere you can get permission to have a show. Exactly. Like right now, I, all the gigs are are public shows, so it really would work better in that scenario because a lot of people don't necessarily want the public to buy tickets and come mm -hmm. to their house. But um, I'm actually working on the uh, the next update. We'll have private gigs, so. It'll be, but yeah, essentially, it's much better for businesses or professional venues right now. So, so w walk us through the process of how somebody, let's start with how would a venue use Gig Road 
to potentially fill open nights or anything along those lines? How does that work? Well, they would just um, create a venue and um, and then they could create gigs and they could um, put the and they basically post the gig and then the gig can be applied to by bands. And um, there's a little slider control that allows them to adjust the the um, profit sharing for every ticket that's sold. And um, and then they, they could just book gigs like that. So it would just be bands in the area or even remote bands could apply and um, and and uh, so, or, so, you know. Get... So, so really, um, this sounds like just a mechanism from a venue venue side of things, a booking mechanism. Yeah. Yeah. So if if exactly. if, if, if you, you, you may have, you know, because I, I spent some time booking a venue and I'm just trying to imagine how this would apply. So you, you, you may be going out there on Friday and Saturday nights and you're booking bigger acts that, you, you know, there's not a problem. They're coming to you saying we want to play or you're looking for somebody. But then right. midweek shows or something along those lines, you just sit here and you, and, and you set up Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday on Gig Road and bands see that and bands basically apply – is that right. am I getting this right? They submit and say exactly I'm right. interested in playing, and 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 the deal structure is already there. It's just laid right. out, and it says this is what you would get paid. This is what you get you would do as a band. Right, exactly. Yeah, and and the hope is that it's going to become a a social marketplace, so that there's many bands, many venues, uh, both professional and just people's houses or in remote locations or wherever and they're all kind of connecting and applying to and inv being invited and so forth to different gigs from different countries as well so people could set up gigs and this it creates a tour in the app um so that people can have all those things organized well that was my next question is and you just touched on it setting up a tour surrounding this and you started in los angeles right right but you just right. you just mentioned that you're in other territories is right. are you where are you i mean are you in most key territories or you know u.s uk france germany italy spain where, where exactly is um yeah it's 26 countries so it's i'm wow. using stripe um which which is like a you know kind of the back end kind of thing to process payments and for every country that they're available in gig road is potentially available as well so 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 Processing payments. What is, are you selling the tickets, or is it just a payment for the venue to sign up and use the service? So that yeah, I would be. So Gig Road makes eighteen percent of the ticket sales. So essentially, when the when the gig is created, there's a you know um, the bands in the venue they agree on a, a ticket price, and then they actually can share on Facebook and or wherever on social media, and then when people buy it, they can buy the ticket straight on their phone. And then when they show up at the gig, the, the their ticket is scanned. So they like the venue or the band can have a, has a scanner on the phone and they can scan the tickets that way. So so you shows set up through Gig Road require require your back end and your ticketing platform to be used. Even, right. So a venue might have some other range. Are you finding any issues where? A venue's like, well, we've got an exclusive arrangement. All of our tickets have to be sold through so and so. Right. Is that is that a concern? Right. Yeah. I mean, that is that's a really good concern. The app itself has actually only been out for a couple months, and it's only on iOS right now. But it will be on the, on the web, um, and maybe by the end of this month. So um, I have mostly. Uh, well, Apple featured it a few weeks ago as one of the apps, new apps that they love. And I've got a ton of signups, but mostly it's it's musicians. So the venues I've had some venues like, for instance, the Little Caesars Pizza um, in Florida, but it hasn't really taken off in terms of the venues. Um, yeah. So I, I'm hoping that you know that's the next step. What so I haven't of, had that problem yet, but yeah. Well, what kind of marketing is incorporated into this, or do you have any partnerships? How can this be kind of put together um, with marketing to promote it? Um, that, that's a great idea. I mean, I, I really have only had been been promoted by Apple right now, and it's um, I have I don't have any partnerships. I'm the only person. Well, you're talking Apple. about like the app. I'm talking about maybe like the tours and the shows and the partnerships from within the app. Is there any kind of plans to use this as something that can drive traffic and put butts in the seats? Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's plans of that, but I, I haven't really been able to implement that yet. Um, there's so many things that I'm thinking, of, and, and even in terms of um, 
partnering with like is it like kind of traveling and for tours and and all kinds of things like maybe couch surfing or you know all kinds of different ways that i can incorporate it but i just haven't i'm the only person involved with gig road right now so it's been kind of oh my gosh <laughs> you are you are the entire company i'm the entire company and yeah i created the app the whole thing that's a that's a lot of hats let me, <laughs> yeah. let, let, me let me yeah ask i'm also teaching that. art yeah, so. so from an artist standpoint Artists can also sign up, but when they sign up, are they, what, making themselves known as, I'm available? So would a venue potentially go in there and search artists and go, hmm, what artists are available in Northern California, and can venues reach out to an artist in that way as well? How does that work? Exactly, yeah. There's a search feature in the app um, to search around me, and you can search for venues, you can search for gigs, you can search for bands and um or artists and and so yeah you just like hook up with people in that way and just create gigs and or you can even invite people to your band or invite people to your venue to help manage it so it's yeah that's the way that would work pretty much and Interesting. Th this this is this is a uh, an ios app but is there also a web inter a web web page for this because i'm thinking from a, again getting back to the marketing standpoint if if a venue has set up a gig and there's an artist, it's great that it's on the mobile app, but a lot of times you're going to want to share that ticket page on the web to all of your various right. socials so you can sell the tickets. Is that right. available as well? No, currently it's only on iOS. And you, it can be from the iOS app, it can be shared on Facebook. But um, I'm almost ready to launch the the dot com giggler.com. Right now, it's just a launching page or a landing page, basically. But um, but it's almost done, and it'll have almost feature parity with the iOS app. Where, so, where do you see this going? I mean, clearly you've got some room to scale. What what are kind of your goals? Where do you see this thing kind of growing and evolving into? Well, I mean, I I would love to. I actually I might the vision of it is to be kind of a different paradigm. I think I'm I'm as a fan, I mean, I'm kind of, I'm really disgusted actually with the the state of live music right now. Um, it's well, how so? I mean, we've I've right, read a little bit about right. this, but talk about that. What, what disappoints you about the state of live music? Um, it's not. It's exclusive, financially exclusive. It's there's a bourgeoisness to it that I don't think ever existed. I mean, I, sent, I mean, the last concert I went to was U2. I saw a U2 at the Joshua Tree tour, you know, and it was it was like 200 and something dollars for the ticket. Then when I came up to the, the parking, it said 20 bucks, but then I got to the thing and it's 50 bucks. So it's just, I mean, my idea of, I mean, before that, before a few years ago, I was able to see anyone I ever wanted to for $30. And, you know, I mean, even big people, I saw like Bob Dylan like eight times on $30, you know, now you go to see the Rolling Stones is $300. I mean, I just think that's disgusting. I mean, the, the idea of... Uh, I mean, if the Clash got together now and they started t selling tickets for three hundred dollars, like it's just it's unbelievable. It's just not in my idea of rock and roll at all. So, um, I want to change that. Like, I I, I want to do anything to change that as, as it can be done because it's not. This is rock and roll is not supposed to be for rich people, you know, or it's supposed to be for everyone, you know. And so that's why I'm trying to democratize, I guess, the whole live music industry in that way. So that's the the big vision, I guess. What sort of um, hurdles or or issues? are you encountering or do you see coming down the road that you have to address? Um, well, I need uh, probably I need some funding, so I need <laughs> to be able to grow it. You know? helps, um, sure. right, right now, like, I mean, I'm, I did the, I did the iOS app first because that was my kind of bread and butter as a programmer. So mm -hmm. I did the iOS app first, but then I've also had to do the web app, which is an entirely different technology. And then eventually I have to do the Android app. So what I'd love to do is just basically grow it technologically and then, and then also market, you know, marketing and, and everything. And that but stuff. Are, are, are you getting any feed? And, and, and I understand it's it's brand new, but have you gotten any feedback right. from any venues or artists saying, well, I need to do this or it has to have this functionality or this doesn't, you know, what what are because, again, as as a venue, I'm right. sitting here going, all right, this has got some pretty cool potential because outside of big bands sometimes it's a pain in the butt to find the smaller original yeah. bands that you want to bring in to fill right. and, and give them the opportunity to play a thursday night for right. half the door or whatever um right. this could be great from a venue standpoint taking a lot of work off of 
well, let me search the internet. Let me call people. Let yeah. me do, you know, it's like all of a sudden you're just making it very easy. And I imagine right. from the band standpoint, it's also much easier because now as you build up a, a listing of venues, they can sit here and go, all right, well, here's a whole bunch of venues that, man, this, this venue in this city's got a Tuesday night, and the next venue in this city's got a Thursday night, and I'll just reach out and reach out and reach out. I right. see great potential here. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, most of the feedback I've gotten has been from um, artists in little towns who are saying that this is this is the way I can get out of this town. I mean, when I was, I mean, I have no, I didn't have any really idea even to set up gigs in L.A., but as far as trying to set up a little tour or something, I really had no idea how to do that. And I'm hoping that Gig Road can help people, you know, with that whole thing. And just like be, knowing exactly, having there basically be um, a uniform way of applying and and showing their 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 music and 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 basically applying to venues without having to know the logistics of each town or know where the venues are. So so far, I mean, it seems to be that the artists are really ha being really interested. And I haven't had a lot of feedback from venues, but I think that's where I need to really reach out, you know, proactively. And I just haven't really had the time to do that. I've is done this, a little bit in Santa Cruz where I live, but not really. yeah, is this something where you can, you know, look at or search for different genres? Um, of music, you know, let's say Michael may cater to a certain genre, but the club down the street may be something totally different. Is it is it easy enough for people to, you know, search within it to either find different genres or flipping that, find venues that cater to uh, their strengths? Yeah, so when someone creates a band or a venue, they have a place where they can add keywords. So the keywords are searchable in the search. So like, for instance, rock or whatever, and they could they could search rock and then all the bands and or artists or venues and gigs actually will all come up that, with that keyword. Though it right. hasn't, I, I think there's a yeah. better way that I could surface that as far as people browsing and things, but I haven't added that feature yet. But. No, that makes a lot of sense because if you're you know a rock band and you want to set up some dates along a tour, either in different territories or domestically, you'll right. want to obviously get to you know the clubs that that crowd is going to be at. So right, that makes a right. lot of sense. Exactly. Jay, Jay, let me let me ask you a question, Jay. This is a first. So um, <laughs> you've done house concerts. You've done a number of house concerts. 15 years, yeah. Wow. How, how could an app like this work for you? Or, or maybe better yet, what do you need to help you better better run your house concerts? Yeah, I think this would help on a couple of levels. One, I think it would help the artist more than it would help me. For me, I have the luxury of reaching out to some of my favorite artists and just saying, hey, you know, we've been doing this for a while. Now they know that we've done them. We've got a pretty, you know, it's 60 people, 20 bucks a pop. They keep every penny of it, right? But yeah, I do right. think a tool like this, a lot of these artists that I talk to, you know, they're doing these living room shows across the country wow. and they're making more revenue from that than they were when they were trying to play clubs. Wow. And more importantly, when you play for 60 people in a house, you're making a lot more money, but everybody's focused on you. Right. They're not, they're not trying to get laid. They're not smoking and drinking and talking. <laughs> they're focused on you. And I think an yeah. app like this if it catered to those artists and made it easy for them to make those connections across the country, right. um, the app would make more revenue, I think, than they would with some certain club dates. And I think right. it would be a lot more volume because living room shows, right. you know, 15 years ago were few and far between. Now they're right. everywhere. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the best shows I've ever seen have been in like airplane hangars or some weird place on the edge of town, you know, and yeah. those are the greatest shows. You'll never forget them, those intimate shows. You're right. I mean, exactly. I've had Kurt Smith from Tears for Fears singing Everybody Wants to Rule the World in my wow. living room. I've oh had my Lisa gosh. Loeb, you know, wow. and, and Jason Faulkner and John Auer and Ken Stringfellow yeah. and Margaret wow. Cho. And the list goes on and on. And uh, sometimes wow. it's as simple as asking these people, hey, listen, here's the, the setup. But I do think that having a structured, you know, app where right. I can say, okay, I am one of these artists and I'd like to do this tour in these markets and right. something that can help them put it together. And then also have an interface where it can put everything together for you. I think right. that's meaningful. I think it makes exactly. a lot of sense. 
Right. Yeah. And I mean, I even heard about the Foo Fighters playing in a backyard or something for, you know, it was a lot of money. But I mean, conceivably, Gig Road it, it w- could be used for something like that. So l- l- let me ask you, Jay, I've, I've never done a house concert. I've never promoted house concerts. So I don't even understand the, the, the mechanics behind the, sure. deal, the deals. So as yeah. Mark was saying right now, he gets 18% of every ticket sale. Yeah. House concerts, are there individual ticket sales or are you just, uh, how, how does it work? Does the artist get just a yeah, flat, flat guaranteed performance or is it like, hey, we pass the hat around, but everybody knows you got to throw 20 bucks in? No, you, this, you, this is yeah. how it works, Michael. Um, what, what we do for these living room shows is, first of all, once we establish the artist, then it's a matter of reaching out to their fan base, our, our list and all that. And they fill up pretty quickly. We don't really have a, it's 60 seats. And right. typically these artist fans will fly in from other states to be wow. at that intimate show. We don't sell tickets. We just basically keep a spreadsheet. And then I have that at the door. And we always kind of overbook by about 10% because 10, 15% of people just don't show up. Yeah. And then they come to the door and they give me $20. And then I cross their name off the list. And then at the end of the night, I give every penny of that to the artist. And they can make, you know, a couple thousand dollars. One of them made $2,500 doing this. And they can sell merch and all that other stuff. Right. And you get to see this intimate, amazing performance, right? Right. right. They get decent revenue. And uh, it, it's, it's pretty cool that way. But there's no tickets. It's just basically I cross them off and I take their money. And then I right. so so, and works. I guess what 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 that's leading me to say, Mark, is you you said you're moving towards allowing private shows to be booked, but maybe right. maybe the the back end structure of that deal has to be different because there aren't physical tickets being sold for house concerts. Right, right, right. So the physical they're not physical, but they're, it's, uh, a, it's, yeah, it's, it's a virtual it's, ticket. It's a yeah. virtual ticket. Yeah, you hold your iPhone up and they exactly. see it or whatever. But the, the the private shows wouldn't have a ticket. It would just be a flat rate that um, is agreed upon before the show, and and that would just all. Oh, so you 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 would you would so your your goal is with private shows between you and the venue, you agree upon a flat service fee. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Exactly, and it could okay. be anything. But it's it's independent. It wouldn't even be you know something that's that's allowed. I mean, the fans would have no idea of it. You know, it would just be what is um, when the gig is created. The the band, the artists, and the venues would agree upon a, a flat fee. And are and, you getting? Oh, go ahead, Michael. No, no, go go ahead, Jay. I was just going to say, are you getting any kind of pushback because you're you're dealing with, as you know better than anyone a monopoly, a mafia, a, Mm -hmm. I mean that Mm -hmm. kind of tongue in cheek, but Mm -hmm. the ticketing area, that's, that's a tough road. There's some people in there, some businesses in there that want to keep the business Mm -hmm. the way it is. Is anybody trying to shut you down or getting in the way? Well, I'm half Italian. So, but, uh, no, no, um, but yeah, like, yeah, actually I've, I've reached out a little bit to some people and I've gotten, Responses like, "Well, I don't want to be part of this because I'm making money on with Ticketmaster." You know what I mean? So yeah, if that you know, and reaching out to even like punk bands who are like you know backing Ticketmaster, you know. So I mean, yeah. So I have to have some push, um, some pushback as far as that, but I mean, I don't really care because I mean, I hate Ticketmaster and I've hated them for a long time, and I think all this stuff needs to change. So yeah, I mean, I'm I'm thinking if I can get a groundswell with people actually using it, then the things will change. I mean. I mean, I really do feel like this is, in, in a way, a lot like how it was when, when uh, Napster came around. You know, there's, um, it's a reaction to, I think, a corporate greed structure that just needs to change, you know? The difference is with your platform, people are getting paid for their hard work. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, I don't, I don't feel that the Napster thing was uh, a good thing, but I, I only feel that uh, CDs shouldn't have been twenty dollars at the time. Well, you're yeah. right. It was it was definitely revolutionary, and right. uh, I when I, as I hear you talk about this more, I can't help but think that if you got an artist like a and I'll just riff here like like a Neil Young or sure. somebody one of those artists that likes to kind of go against the grain a little bit, sure um, to say you know what enough is enough. I want to try this. You're right. off to the race. 
Heck yeah. I mean, if I got anything, if I really, yeah, if I had an artist who had a, you know, a fan base like that, it would, I, I mean, I feel it would explode, but I just, you know, so far I've really been focusing on and gotten the greatest feedback really um, from the really small artists in remote places who just have really, you know, left some incredible reviews on the app store, just kind of saying, you know, this is the app that I've always wanted kind of thing. And, but if someone big like that, or if someone with a kind of a you know Pearl Jam or something with a gripe against corporate rock suddenly decided that this was something they'd like to try, I mean, I feel that it would have a huge amount of potential, and I definitely have to hire somebody at that point. And, 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 and it also feels like, from a venue standpoint, uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, many many venues, especially established venues, are contractually obligated to a ticketing service. Right, um, right, you know, right. And, and it's it's just the deal they've cut. So right. if it, it feels like you are in a situation of house concerts are a right. deal because right. Jay has no no agreement with anybody. When you do a house concert, you, it's a spreadsheet. You do what you want. Right, and then right. coffee shops, cafes, things that exactly. are too small to be cared about by the ticket masters, the live nations, the any other ticketing company that's going out there going, I want to sign you up and sell your tickets. Right. That that's almost where I feel like you get the groundswell of of venues because you're playing you're going after the venues it I, I hate to use this term. You're going after the long tail of venues that most people uh -huh. don't care about. Right. Exactly. Yeah, and I was also thinking about pop-up shows like EDM, you know, yeah. raves, yeah. things yeah. like that. You could you could own that market. Yeah, I mean, the idea is like a DJ could just, you know, literally just tour across the country setting up shows one at a time and just try to figure out, oh, now I'm, I'm almost to Austin, so see what's going on there, and just throw their gear in the back of their car and take off. And so, yeah, yeah absolutely. Sorry. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, this, this is exciting, and, and, and I feel like over the past few years, there's been a lot of, not a lot, but there's been a number of people who've tried to take on private shows and house concerts, right. and nothing's ever gotten footholds in that. And I, right. can't, I can't remember, there was a company like five years ago out of San Francisco that, that I was talking to that wanted to do this and they just disappeared and i feel like this is this is an area of the music business that needs a little bit of it's underserved it's underserved yeah. a little bit of structure a little bit of service and technology yeah you know can basically mm -hmm. put you can put together a, a, a house concert tour across the right. u.s but right now it's a lot of work it's a lot of work yeah. to do house concerts you've got to know people you, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a lot of picking up the phone, doing emails, and, and manually booking them. And if you can provide a, provide a tool that, that like, like you want here, this could be right. big. Oh, yeah. thank you. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I mean, I think there's one company that's called So Far Sounds that's doing this pretty successfully right now. Yeah. Like Ed, Ed Sheehan um, was on there, and a lot of other people, the, guy, the girl from, um, from Yaya Yaz. Um, I, but anyway, but she was on there. But the thing is, is that it's they're very opinionated. I mean, they want it to be folk, basically. They want it to be quiet. They want everyone to sit quietly. It's that type of vibe, which is fine. But I mean, I also want to open it up for, like you said, like DJs or for punk shows. Or I don't want it to just be about sitting quietly and watching acoustic music. Though that's wonderful. But it could be anything, you know. Well, they can serve that market, and I think that you could be exactly. successful. You just mentioned, you know, EDM and punk. Those are perfect because they're underserved. Where are these, where are these kids going to go? You know, right. Where are they going to find this stuff? They're lucky if they have one of these that happen in their marketplace. But if you can tap into that market, man, that's right. that's a huge market. Yeah, because I mean, yeah, exactly. And it feels that venues as a whole are kind of struggling, you know. And so I think that maybe this could just give a different kind of take on it. And if people have, you know, like in an industrial area of a town, they have access to some like auto shop that's that's vacant on the weekends. That yeah. could be a venue, you know. Yeah, and I'm also wondering if some of these venues, it's kind of like a hotel room that doesn't fill up or an airplane that doesn't fill up. There's got to be some nights, and Michael, you know this better than anyone, <clears throat> there's got to be some nights that either last minute fall through or you don't get them booked 
and this maybe this could be you know a remnant kind of like we will fill in the the gaps for you and make sure that you're booked exactly right. right i mean again having booked the venue up in northern california that's you know we 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 would we we would try and always have friday and saturday nights with bigger acts but we were like okay we want to start filling in the rest of the week well geez you know that becomes a bit of a battle because um you you know the major acts aren't coming through on a tuesday night right. and you know you want you want to try and support local scenes but man chasing down bands it, it, it's the it's the ability to put a system in place that as a venue, I could just sit here and say, I have got every Tuesday night open. Right. Here you go. Here's the deal. Apply. Mm -hmm. it's, it's an online booking night. And that's mm -hmm. basically, instead of coming by and knocking on the door saying, what have you got available? Here, just log into our gig, gig road. Check out mm -hmm. our venue. Here's mm -hmm. everything we've got available. Find a night mm -hmm. that works for you. Accept the deal. Done. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly it. And then, and then, yeah, absolutely. And there's a chat room on Big Road where people could talk about the ticket prices or whatever, and then, um, then, then put the gig on sale, and, and that's it. Is there any kind of a, a, a Yelp factor in here where you can make sure you keep the quality of the artist to where you want, and people can kind of rate like your Uber driver or whatever, you yeah. know, to, to kind of help out a little bit? You, you see where I'm going? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's reviews on Gig Road. So if people, but people can't leave reviews unless they're, um, there's something, they don't have, a, they have a connection or something with that band or, or venue. But um, yeah, so if, if a band uh, plays a gig with a venue, then each of them can leave a review um, on each other's pages. And that, that kind of hopefully will keep everybody honest or <laughs> theoretically. From, from a ticketing standpoint, are you selling just GA tickets or can you sell uh, reserve seats? No, right now it's just GA. Okay. Yeah, yeah, just just it's all it's all just one ticket. Um, but that, that would be wonderful to eventually get it like tiered like that. That'd be great. Well, and and that that becomes the challenge. I mean, that's why you end up going to ticketing platforms because all of a sudden mm -hmm. you need to sell reserved seats. You've got tables, you've got benches or whatever, and you've only got mm -hmm. seventy of them, and you need to price them differently. That mm -hmm. that that's where the ticketing companies start coming in because they've got the 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 platform to manage inventory that's basically right. all it is is inventory management right with, with what you're doing there is no inventory management it's just no. everything yeah and one of yeah. the most difficult things to do is to book uh dates in other territories right there's so many different things like exchange rates and localization of marketing i mean there's so many different things to think about Right. Man, this could really help somebody who wanted to kind of play dates in, in another territory. Yeah. I mean, people could set up a gig, even um, busking. You know, there's like someone could just say, I'm going to be on this street corner or something. You know, and <laughs> I mean, really, it could be anything like that. And But you're right. I mean, there's, yeah, you're right. I'm hoping it really allows people to travel, you know, and stuff too. Um, yeah. So, Mark, where where can they find more information here? Um, well, gigroad.com, and um, so there's information there, and and uh, hopefully I, I'm I'm intending to launch gigroad.com um, on uh, May 1st. So uh, there's there's that, and then also on the on the iOS app store. Excellent, awesome. excellent. Well, appreciate you Interesting joining stuff. us, Mark. We're, I'm I'm definitely going to be be watching this and following this because again, it's a, it's a market that I think needs needs some help. Oh, th yeah. Thank you guys so much. It's an unbelievable honor for me to be on the show, and I really appreciate it. Tremendous. Thanks for joining thank us, so Mark. Much. Thank, Great thank conversation. You, Mark. Thank, thank you, Mark. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks. I think this is a market that really could use something to help. I mean, yeah. th th this is not about going out there and booking Madison Square Garden using Game No, Road. it's the opposite. It, yeah. it, it's, it's the people who need help booking shows, and and it and and you don't have the connections and you don't have yeah. the venue relationships and it's like this is this is ideal for that like I said the coffee shops the cafes the the living the, the, the living room yeah. shows the 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 in a garage event that type of stuff 
is great for this. And those are such great performances. They're so intimate. And this helps the artists. It helps, you know, it could help venues. Um, but I think it's also going to help the fan because now you get to see a lot more of these great intimate shows. Some of the best shows I've ever seen are were in either somebody's living room or, you know, at somebody's workplace or, you know, some, you know, hangar somewhere. So I think it's really exciting and I think it's underserved today. And this could, we should watch this because I yeah. think this could really I'm, grow. Like I said, I'm definitely, I'm definitely going to pay attention to Gig Road. I, I, it's a cool name. It's a fun name. Um, yeah. But I'm just going to watch to see how this goes because I love the fact that it can help venues and I love the fact that it can help the artists. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. All right, Jay. Cool. Good, good catching up. Can't uh, wait to see your, your intro when, when the show is posted. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All, All right, right everybody. Go, go to HypeBot, you guys. Everybody, yes, HypeBot. Thank you very much, guys. We'll talk to everybody next week on the Music Biz Weekly Podcast.